Welcome back to CTA. We stopped. We were going to stop for a few minutes, but then after that, we decided to uh, just put some food into our stomachs uh, and just continue with the amazing story. Hey, behind the scenes to me. Hey, hey. This man is intelligent. This man is wise. This man is... He's, he's gone through a lot <laughs> and he's doing a lot. Let me say that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited about this next, uh, I don't know if it's half, three quarters or a quarter. I'm excited <laughs> for this next era that you're going to go into. But before we do that, mm. Mr. T, I want to touch into some of your music. Okay. Uh, because yeah. uh, hey, I, don't want, I don't want to ignore some of the songs. So first and foremost, tell mm. me a little bit about the song you did with Kevo Youth. Kevo Youth, Ghetto Prophecy. Mm. I think it was a counter of something Tupac did. <laughs> There's something Tupac did about ghetto. Oh, yes. Also called ghetto prophecy. Yes. So we were just trying to counter and declaring life. Because uh, anyone born in the ghetto, it looks like there's a timeline. Mm. And it looks like you can't go beyond the concepts of life. Then we felt because when you do rap music uh, joint with the raga, mm. it's something that is listened a lot to the, uh, to the people in the ghetto. So it was kind of also an awareness towards crime and all that, leading them to Jesus. It was an intentional sound. Mm. To, an inter to, a, to a specific crowd of people and trying to reach them and pointing them back to the cross. Hey, hey, so me got again Batting, batting, batting Me not encouraging, cause me know that it's a sin thing This is K for you, K you that I'm evangelist and Mr. C speaking We step up and play, so me tell you all of them Listen to this nice brand new thing We want to all of them to know There's no change right now Pesa kupati na bidi kubweso Daily utegi maisha kihasla Wengu wana kufa watoto mapachla Kings, queens, lost in the ghetto Sisti sauti na sikia maeko Cooking, sweet, champagne popping Missiles, bullets, guns, cocking Kweli ni seme, Jesus is knocking Down ya ghetto, Jesus is calling Inuwa imani, sasa inuka Macho fungua, brother amuka Me want you all again to know
How did you end up on Sunday Christian remix? Uh, I saw Mad Love Lounge. Aha. I think I, you know, I saw was a go getter. Yeah. Uh, there's a time I saw sold my brother a t shirt. Bro, I'm going to lose his music. I keep it. I keep it. I read and all these are going to be a good one. So, I live with the t shirt. I'm brown. I come to Lea. I broke and I'm a homesay. I'm a pen. So, he bought. And so, I saw was a very aggressive. Mm. And so he came and said, you know what, I'm doing a remix on this song. And that was uh, immediately we are done Finje Finje. Mm. So now people got now the vibe and the concept of I can do a single. Then after that, ni tejeshi. Kuje to a track. Then we do a remix. So that's how we landed there. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, okay, then now let's enter your songs with uh, Samukat. Yes. Does that come at this period of time? Uh, that for, one comes later. For Samukat now, yes. I was employed. And then I meet Samukat, and uh, man, I, personally I love dancehall. Mm. Uh, there's a saying when I say manga, kuna watu wanapenda mziki na mziki wapendi. Mm. So, mina penda dancehall, <laughs> but nika dancehall like dependi. <laughs> mina R&D vio, uh, vio. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I love dancehall. And then I heard Samukat sing, I said, what? We are so blessed. I think this guy is above the ordinary rad of mediocrity. And I was so excited when I heard what he was doing. Then I, his passion for prayer, his passion for ministries, understanding of scripture and all that. Mm. So I said, Samu, can't you know what? Um, we can do something. I'll still stick to my line, you stick to your line. But we try to bring a fusion of something that has not been done be before. So I knew he's called more in the prophetic and he was called more in the apostolic. Mm. So now this was the convergence of the apostle meets the prophet. So we did a mixtape. When you say you're called more in the apostle, what does that mean? We have fivefold ministries. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when, when you are called, you either fall under an apostle, a prophet, a teacher, a pastor, uh, or an evangelist. Those are, we call them the five graces, according to Ephesians chapter number four. The kingdom is very much structured and all of them have specific things that they do. Mm. Many times the prophetic carries the intelligence dimension of God. And that's where the safety is. That's where the voice of God direction and instructions come from. And also governmental because prophets bear a certain level of government. Amos says, you know, by the voice of a prophet, Israel was delivered. And by the voice of a prophet, Israel was established. So a man spoke uh, by the name of Moses. His voice delivered Israel, his voice established Israel. So prophetic is very governmental. It's beyond telling you your name and your phone number, uh, but it's a governmental grace. Apostolic... No, hold on, let me ask a question. Aha, in fact, yes. let me start with my difficult question asking. Can I? Yes. So, every Christian, yes. shouldn't they be prophetic in within the life that they live? So, for example, mm. in CTA, yes. Uh, if I inquire of the Lord, shouldn't yes. he be able to tell me, uh, interview this person or this person or this person? Maybe I don't have the, apost the mm. prophetic gift to start talking to random people, yes, yes. but within my calling and what I've been asked to do, mm -hmm. shouldn't I then have that full five-fold ministry for what it is that the gift of God has called me to do? When we come to the Christian, what we call is the Christian knowing the voice of the master. The sheep know my voice that knowing the voice becomes very powerful in terms of the navigation of day to day. Mm. The voice of God should not be strange. When we come now to, the, the, you can also be a Christian who is prophetic, but you're not a prost prophet. You're apostolic, but you're not an apostle. Uh -huh. You're evangelistic, but you're not an evangelist. It's only that you touch that dimension of grace. So hearing the voice of God is mandatory for any believer because you can't have a relationship with a God whose voice you've never heard. Mm. You know, it kills the protocol of conversation. And that's why now the concept of yielding and the concept of cultivating personal fellowship becomes very important because the greatest asset a believer can have is to know the voice of God because destiny is personal and he holds your destiny is God. Mm. He's the only one who can navigate you even in areas that we don't know. So when it comes to the fivefold, it's more on the governmental and managerial aspect of the kingdom. Oh, you're talking about like the church being one of the pillars. Yes. So within this church, there's the... Yeah, you have ushers, praise and worship and all that. So when we look at the fivefold, they have different roles they play in the body of Christ. The apostolic is more territorial and more doctrinal. That's why the Bible says the church was laid upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. Mm. So when you carry apostolic grace, you tend to uh, lean more towards biblical interpretation. 
no, no, not uh, you know you want to know what did Paul mean or what yes. was Paul saying okay. uh, without what we call in technical theology allegory giving an external meaning to a certain scripture like saying yes wali panda maisha yako inaweza kuwa inapanda eh leo utapanda you know that's allegory maybe alikuwa ndo anaenda kwa mlima so <laughs> <laughs> so now we have to look at the context the content for uh, grounding the church in truth and the prophetic also now it's more of the direction the teaching is more of breaking that truth into palatable portions because mm. there is what an ordinary believer can consume still the same truth but possibly seven things you need to know about god of course there are not seven there could be more yes. but when you package them in seven someone is able to understand the pastoral grace is more of the care you know someone will call you get to see you in a hospital mm. get to know about your welfare you praying how's your growth in the lord the evangelistic carries a burden of calling men into the kingdom and that's why many evangelists uh, kind of have some dimension of anxiety because you know an an evangelist I might put him out there like a marketer mm. when you see people marketing there are many things they won't tell you <laughs> mm. they will make you believe this product is what you need mm. now when you come to an apostle he will begin to tell you by the way before you benefit <laughs> from this product this is how you behave mm. it's the same way the bank will tell you come for a loan by the time you apply that loan is 3 months down the line yep. or oh, we need security or oh, we need signature how is your account but the marketer makes it look like money is here you come and pick it mm. but now when you go through the process for me I compare that as the apostolic where we tell you it's okay you are born again you are going to heaven but these are we live in the kingdom mm. so when i discover that's the grace i carry it it directs your conversation your operation your passions and even how you view the scripture okay because your assignment controls interpretation of scripture. Mm. Yeah, so for me my burden basically is to bring forth and tell you this is why Jesus was entered Jerusalem in a donkey and possibly did not come uh, you know riding on a horse. Because now you try to get the context and and do a lot of scripture exposition. That's very uh, that's very apostolic. I love okay, I to be honest you've broken it down really well you you've but from a layman's perspective yes what you're saying is this fivefold ministry is there to empower the church yes in fact and, and these are the different roles yes. however the cut and tow mm. it doesn't mean that these guys because mm. what happens sometimes is if i want prophecy i need to get my prophecy through the man of god mm. and not god yes yes in fact the fivefold a, a healthy church needs to be exposed to the fivefold even in a healthy pastoral team mm. you need to have a prophet an apostle a teacher because the bible calls it uh, for the equipping of the saints i get it so when you unajua zile majim za kitambo nye mawe liko nzito on time so mm. some people are more prophetic and they pray a lot but mm. they don't have the word uh, because it takes an apostle now to ground you on the word up, up. and some people have a lot of word but they don't pray Or they're not pastoral. Yeah, they are not. There's no care. There's no care yeah. nothing and I think we've seen it in church. So a healthy church needs to be exposed to the five graces. Okay. And sometimes God might even facilitate that a man of God touches the five but you will have strength on one. Yes. You realize he leans towards a certain area. He's an amazing teacher but he doesn't have per se the grace for the pastoral. And again now the same thing begins to dictate what we carry. You'll find that a man will go to a church and say mimi napenda vile mso preach. Mm. What they don't know they have that apostolic DNA in them. So they tend to connect more to the apostolic. I get That's it. That's why like begets like members are wired differently. Someone will go in a place where they pray and they say uko au tiki sana huku ndio sasa mimi nataka huku tunapiga prayer. It doesn't mean those ones are wrong. Mm. It just means that God has wired you in a prophetic system. and because of your mandate purpose and assignment the prophetic is an advantage in your life mm. yes and also in some situations some different apostolic graces have been elevated over the others yes yes so for example i really like this guy mm. because he is prophetic uh, but <laughs> you've neglected the, yeah. the the one who offers care yeah yes what, what happens is uh, sometimes you might find a certain grace dominating in a certain season Oh, like when powerful. we look at the mutation of the church in Kenya there is a time everyone was an evangelist mm. 
Mm. Uh, even some of the pastors today changed from evangelists. You look at their posters in the 80s and 90s, they were evangelists. Because it was a radical stage of soul winning. Now later, after many evangelists did their job, churches began to pop up. So some of those evangelists became pastors. Mm. And now they changed from evangelist to pastor. Now slowly, it's like Kenya, we are moving into an apostolic age and a prophetic now it looks like everyone wants to be an apostle. And sometimes you might want to enter an office that you are not qualified for and end up misrepresenting that office. Mm. So kuna time wana kutanga certain grace is popular because of the assignment of God in that time. But that does not mean the other graces are not relevant. Okay. All graces all time and all day have something they do to the body of Christ. Okay. If one misses will never grow. Ah oh, man, I love that. You've, 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 and every individual should aspire to do one of these things. Of course, within a, within yourself as a Christian, mm. some things may come out to be much stronger. Yeah. But uh, you have elements of each one within yes. you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm. Eh, hey, this is so powerful. I like the way you you've broken that down. Okay, so you and Samukat now unite. So we unite. And I discovered this guy is very prophetic and very apostolic. I can't say that I'm an apostle. Uh the apostolic office you you get it after your works are tested. Like people will look and say surely these are the works of an apostle. Mm. So this man is an apostle. <laughs>